Um, in the My Search tab, this is where you can get customized with your searches. So if you want to um, add some other fields to your search, if you want to uh, move some of these fields around, if you want to create your own search forms, you can do that over here on the My Search tab. To start out with, you'll have some default searches available for you um, that have been pre-built um, you know, by the MLS. And you'll see up here at the top, there's this little F with a padlock next to it, and it's called General Query. That means this is a search form, F for form, and the little padlock denotes that it's an admin form. So this is one that was built by the MLS that's available for everybody to use by default. And when you first come into Realist to start running your searches, that's the default search that's going to come up, that general query. And you'll see if you scroll down here, it's got some basic fields on it to search by you know, the location or the owner name on a property. Um, if you click the little open folder up here at the top, then you'll see the other admin form that's available for you as well. There's a foreclosure query in here. So if you want to search for foreclosure properties, a uh, quick way to do that would be to go ahead and open up the foreclosure query. And it'll go ahead and open up that form over here on the left, and then you'll see all those different uh, um, you know, fields, so the foreclosure stage, the recording date, uh, distress sales, the owner name, the subdivision, the city. So it's a great way to come in and search for foreclosure properties. Um, let me go ahead and open up here again. We'll come back here and click on the general query. We'll load that one back up. Um, similar to our quick search, you have all those same options here uh, next to those fields. So, for example, owner name you have starts with and is. Um, house number, here's a good example of if you want to get a little more detailed with your address search. Um, house number is set to is. So if I put in you know, 123, it's going to be searching for 123 for a house number. However, if I choose is between, then it'll search for anything in between the two numbers that I put in there. So maybe I'm searching between 123 and 150, and I want to pull up all those properties on a particular street. Um, then I can do that using the is between option. Okay? Or you can do is greater than or is less than. So you'll see those different operators on those search fields. Um, any of the fields that you've typed information into, if you want to clear them out, there's a little option out here to the right. You just click the little button and hit clear values and that'll clear that field back out. Um, you can also delete these fields completely from your uh, search if you'd like. So, um, for example, if I took house number, if I wanted to take house number completely out, I could come over here and click delete, and that would remove house number from my search form altogether. Okay. What if I want to get that back, or what if I want to add other fields to my search form? Uh, down here in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see the Edit Attributes option. So you click Edit Attributes, and it's going to open up another window on top of everything here, and you're going to see all of those fields over there on the right-hand side that are currently on your search form. If you want to take any of those out, you can come in and just click the X next to them, or you could come over here to the left-hand side and just uncheck them from the, uh, from the options on the left. All of these fields over here are grouped by category as well. So if you're looking for a particular field, um, for example, the, uh, the street number field that I took out, uh, maybe I want to put that one back in, so I could come in here, I'll click on location, and then find house number, check it back off. Now I can take house number and move it back up there where I had it before. Okay, so you can see, you can check these, you can uncheck these, you can delete them over here. You can also click and drag them to move them around on the particular uh, section on the search page, and they're categorized by the different um, type of field you're looking at, owner information, location information, property characteristics like bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, you know, those types of things. So you have all that information over there on the left if you need to sort by that uh, by those fields. Okay. And then when you're done, just click Apply, and that will save those changes over here on the left-hand side. Okay. So you can add fields to this, you can remove fields, and you see there's a lot of other fields available for you to search by in there. Um, you can also add multiple values to these fields. So, for example, if I'm searching on um, you know, Main Street, I can come over here and click plus and add Main Street to my search criteria. And then I could come in here and put in another one, Elm. Okay. So you can add multiple values to these fields by using a little plus sign out there to the, to the right-hand side. Okay. And, of course, you can delete them if you need to by clicking the little X. 
If you need to clear everything out at any point, you want to clear out your search results or what you put in as criteria, there's a little clear button up here. Just click clear up there to, uh, to wipe out your entire uh, search form. If you'd like to create your own search form from scratch, you have the ability to do that as well. So like I said, you can come in and load up the default ones that are here, and then you can make changes to them by clicking Edit Attributes. But maybe you want to create your own from scratch. So up here at the top, you'll see the Create New Search Form button. So you'll click that. That will open up a, a similar window to what we saw a minute ago. And then you can come in and add the exact fields that you want to put on your search. So maybe you want to search by... Uh, owner name, you want to search by address, you want to search by um, bedrooms and bathrooms and building square feet and the style of the property, then you can go ahead and do that. Now once you've created that search form, over here on the right hand side you have two options. You can either save it at that point, which is going to allow you to give it a name, or if you just want to create it and see what it looks like, go ahead and click create, and it'll go ahead and create that search form over here on the left hand side. Okay. Um, any of these that you see with a little select option, just click that button and it'll allow you to select those items from the list. Okay, so in this option, in this particular case, style, allowing you to choose those styles from the list. Okay. So at this point, you'll notice up here at the top where that little um, admin button used to be, where there, there was a little padlock up there and it said general query. Now it's just a, an F for form and it says new form. So you haven't actually saved this yet. Um, if you were to leave and go do something else or try to log out, it'll prompt you. Do you want to um, do you want to save that uh, form at that point? Um, so at this point, you, you will uh, go ahead and click the Save button up here at the top, okay. and it will allow you to save that as a form or as a search. Now, the difference between saving a form and a search is the presence of criteria. You'll notice over here the, the option to save as a search is grayed out currently because I haven't actually put any criteria into this search form yet. So um, if I were to just save a blank form, then the only option here is to save it as a form. Let's call this my new form. So now you'll see up here next to F, my new form. Um, if you were to put criteria in there at any point, and then save it, then you'd have the ability to save it as a search because a search contains search fields and values, not just search fields only. Okay, so you can go ahead and put that in there. Call this my search. And now you'll be able to see when I go in here to the open button, I have in here the admin forms that were already available to me. I have a form that I've created, and I have a search that I've created. So you can see the difference between the F and the S there for form and search. Okay. Now you can access those whenever you need to, every time you log into the, uh, to the system. Okay. Um, would question about current searches. If you have current saved searches in Realist, unfortunately, those are not going to be able to be brought over into the new program. Um, we weren't able to convert those saved searches, so you may want to. And like I said, you'll have access to Classic for uh, you know for a good a good period after we go live. So if you need to take a little bit of time and, and save some of those searches again, you'll have that ability to get back to uh, to Realist Classic. So up here at the top, we looked at the Create New button, we looked at the Open button, we looked at the Save button, and we also looked at the Clear Search button. Any place you see a little uh, uh, a little question mark, that's a tutorial. So um, if you want to watch a quick little video on how to run a search or how to use the grid or the map or anything like that, click those little uh, um, search tutorial links there and that will pull up a little video. There's also a little actions field here. If you drop this little actions field, some of the uh, items that we've already looked at are um, repeated in this little drop down list. The create new button, which we saw up here. The open uh, option, which we saw a little folder up here a minute ago. The Save button, which we also looked at, and then the Clear Search button, which we looked at as well. There's also a Delete option in here, and this is how you would go in and delete any of your saved forms or searches. So if you had created any and you wanted to delete them, then you could come in, check them off, hit Delete, and it would delete those from your uh, form. Okay? And then, of course, again, you can come back in and open up any of the other ones that you want including the general query. Okay. 
The actions field also contains a nice little option down here. This will retain your last five search forms that you had loaded or searches. So um, it's kind of just a running tally of the last five, uh, whether it was in your current session or a previous session. So if you have a search that you use quite often, instead of going to the open button and opening it up from there, you can quickly just drop down the actions, choose it from the list here. Your last five searches that you accessed will be loaded here, and you can go ahead and load those up from the list. So that is your, your search options over here, the ability to customize those, to create new ones, to save existing ones, um, so on and so forth. Okay, you have the, the options next to each field here. And, and actually, one other thing that I forgot to mention, you can take these and actually click and drag these on the fly here as well. So if you want to reorder these fields right there without actually coming down here and clicking Edit Attributes, you can take any of these fields and just click and drag and move them around. And it'll put them uh, where you drop them in the list. Okay. So let's take a look here. Let me do my owner name search again. I'll just do Wilkins again. And let's pull up uh, a property here. First of all, you'll notice when it pulls up my search results here, um, I get kind of a default grid down here at the bottom. We'll come back and we'll take a look at you know the, the grid and some of the options here. I want to point out the first few columns here. If you hover over them, this will show you um, the MLS, the first column is the MLS photo indicator, so you'll see a little camera button there. If there are photos available that we've pulled over from the MLS, and you can click on the little uh, camera button there, and it'll open up the, uh, the photos to view uh, from directly from the MLS. And you can scroll through them and, and pull up those pictures from there. Um, the second column is the MLS listing indicator, so you'll get a color-coded um, little status indicator here to let you know whether or not there's a, an existing listing in the MLS on that property. So, for example, this property here, there's a sold listing uh, matching up to that property in the MLS. Um, for this one, there's an expired listing, and for this one, there's an active listing. So you'll see they're color-coded, and you can hover over them. We'll see these indicators a little later as well when we get into the map searching and some of the options on the map. The last two columns here, then, are your foreclosure indicator or your distressed sale indicator. So if that property is in a stage of foreclosure, um, you'll see an indicator there in the uh, the third column there. I don't think I have any in this particular search, but you would see things like uh, you know pre foreclosure auction, um, bank owned properties, and then also distressed sale indicators. Um, you would see things like short sales or bank owned sale indicators um, showing up in that particular field there as well. So there's an example of a bank owned sale.